Hey everybody, welcome to League of Legends Anonymous Podcast! With me, your host, Wise Papa Smurf, the most charming and handsome host on the show, and also with me are some less charming and less handsome fellows, like Zill. What's up, Zill? What's up? Yeah. I'm not going to say anything to that. I'm not going to acknowledge you need to that. Increase your charm by about 10 or 15%. Get on my level. I think the community loves me and is paying way more attention to me than you. Yeah, the community does I love you right now. You are they the do. darling of the community right I now. Am. I true. am. Indeed. I'm so, not really worried about my fans. <laughs> true. Hey, and also here, new host, hasn't been on the show before, but you probably recognize him from community, maybe. His name is Don Run. Oh, Hello. What is happening? Uh, not much. Suffering in league. Suffering in league. Is. All like right, well, tell, us, which is why you fit in. Yeah, tell everybody a little bit about yourself, brah. Uh, I am a. Uh, I've listened for a good while. I was introduced to Lola by Rowan here uh, a few years ago before he actually joined on the podcast. That's me, and, by the way, for those who. Oh, I I apologize. Uh, You're good. You're good. Go on, go on. And I am also currently uh, Wise Papa Smurf's uh, Game Master. Ooh. Yeah, that's true. I didn't know you were leading the D&D party. Yeah, yeah, he's the Dungeon Master. He's my... That's awesome. He's my Spencer Crittenden. For all of you uh, Harmon Quest fans out there. Um, So, anyway, yeah, Don's here. And, you know, before the podcast, we were talking about, like, oh, we get a third. Oh, why not Don? Let's grab Don. And Zill's like, yeah, he's got a charming personality. What did you say exactly? I said he has a handsome voice and a, and a, and a great personality. Yeah, and then that's where I said he has a great personality. Like an ugly chick has a great personality. And then we all laughed, and he laughed, and I'm like, he's in. That's yeah. podcast material right there. Yeah, that's, that's sweet chuckle. This um, man could take one on the chin. I've, I've known Nick since 2015. We met playing games together via League. Never met in real life. And yeah, he's been a, a solid member of the community ever since I joined. Um, Nick is also, oh, sorry, Don Ron here is a Phil main, um, which there are not a lot of those yeah. that are any good, but this one is. This one can do all the roles, all the things. Every position, he can do it. That is correct. I made it up to about uh, Platinum 1 last season playing Phil. It's impressive. Oh, nice. That's very good. Just imagine if he'd actually, you know, focused a little bit. How far <laughs> <it would happen. laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he would have crusted. So, all right, Don. Uh, this is the podcast. We have an open forum policy here. Do you have anything you particularly want to talk about, or do you just want to let Zill... Rant uh, I have something I want to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. It sounded like Zill wanted to rant. So. All right. So. Okay. Coffee. All right. So here's the deal. Like, I've been a barista for 17 years. People in the community know me as a coffee person, and I've answered a lot of, you know, fair and some dumb questions about coffee over the years. However, I just want to like get a few things out there on the floor because I keep getting the same questions over and over again. And um, one is uh, people inevitably ask me about home espresso machines, usually after they've bought them. And I just want to say right from the get go, I don't ever buy a home espresso machine. Um, They're shitty. Like, okay, so here's the analogy. Like a, a car is a conglomeration of complex machinery, right? You've got like hydraulics going on, you have electronics going on, you have like this internal combustion engine, and it all works together, you know, with all these belts and, and everything. And like, you know, one thing breaks and it doesn't function as well. It still runs perhaps, but just like, isn't as good. Um, it's just very complicated. And an espresso machine is like that. It has lots of different components that are doing lots of different things. And, you know, in price point, in order to get a good car, you have to spend a certain amount of money, right? Like, if you spend $1,000 on a car, it's probably not a great car, right? Similarly, with espresso machines being these complex arrays of machinery and sensors and pumps and all that kind of stuff, if you spend $300, $400, $500, $1,000, you are buying shit. You are just buying scrap plastic and metal 
to be thrown away at some point. They're not worth it. Normal espresso machines will run you for like 15, 18, $20,000. And that's for one that is working properly. And it takes a lot of money to continue to maintain that and maintain the energy requirements. Do not buy a home espresso machine. You will not be able to make good espresso with that at all. It will be garbage. Okay, and that is not a snob talking. And here's why. Here's why I'm not a snob. People ask me, what's the best way to brew coffee, right? And they're like expecting me to say, you have to buy all this fancy equipment. You have to buy all this like, um, you have know, really expensive coffee. And it's like, okay, you don't. The only thing you really need to have is coffee that's fresh, okay? So within two weeks of it being roasted. And then ideally by somebody who knows what they're doing, but that can run you, you know, $10, $12 a pound. It's not too bad. Um, and then, yeah, like all you have to do is have a clean coffee pot that costs like maybe 80 bucks, like at the most expensive, even a $40 coffee pot will do it fine. And just keep it clean. Just do the basics of like wiping it out and rinsing it over time you ever, and you'll be fine. Have you ever used a French press? Yes, I've used a French press. Yeah, I fucking love a French press. It's like That's 20 great. bucks. I'm glad you do. You And then, yeah, delicious yeah, coffee. I mean, yeah, and, and honestly, way cheaper. Totally efficient way to brew coffee. My girlfriend brews coffee that way. I don't like French presses because they're not paper filtered and they continue to steep the coffee even after you've poured it out of the pot. Like the water never not connects with the coffee grounds, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I want something that's not super strong or getting stronger as it sits. So I'd rather have paper filtered coffee. But yeah, just get a regular coffee maker, fucking clean it like you're supposed to and um, buy fresh coffee. That's all you have to do. Like everyone's like, what's the trick? What's the trick? Clean your damn pot, okay? Like, so when people brew coffee and they get a new coffee maker and they're like, oh, I got this new coffee maker for Christmas. And then they, you know, make a few pots and six months later, they've never cleaned it. You've got this residue buildup of like decomposing oils on the inside, right? And it started to form like a crust. And every time you brew, co brew coffee in that now, that takes that flavor from that nasty decomposing crust and puts it in your cup. And you have to clean that out regularly in order to keep your coffee um, tasting good. So a lot of lots of pe times people are like, oh, I can't make coffee like you. It's like if I just go look in your pot at home and it's dirty, that's the reason why. That's all. Just you didn't maintain your equipment because you're lazy. I have that's a all. counterpoint to this. Fine. Mm -hmm. Go. Okay. I bought an espresso machine, like the little one. What's that? It's It has capsuled espressos. And you put them in. Yeah, you won't like it. You put them yeah. in, and then it shoots pressurized water through the like yeah, aluminum sure. capsule, mm -hmm. makes an espresso shot, and then you put other shit in it. Like you, you know, could probably make a machine like that that rehydrated potatoes in the same way. And, and I would probably... love it. And that's the catch. So like <laughs> the espresso machine that I bought, uh, like I said, capsules shoots water through them, comes out the other side. No fuss, no muss. That's it. Right, no and fuss. so how much was this thing? Like a hundred bucks, hundred fifty. Okay, but okay. it's and keep in mind, double it's, what you should pay. It's really just a, it's really just a high pressure pump, and all the components it just shoots it into the capsule, and then it comes out the other side. So there's nothing like to clean, because it's all the brewing That's is done in think. the cup, right? So counterpoint. I love that fucking thing. Yes. I drink those things all the fucking time. It's delicious. And I like a good coffee. I go to places that are fancy, get some fancy coffees. Yeah, they're slightly better than what I'm making, and I expect that. But for 150 yeah, bucks, I can get a Diet Coke version of what it is you're doing, and I'm okay with that. Okay. I mean, if you know what you're getting into, and I didn't, I didn't buy this going, well... This will eliminate coffee shops altogether. I pretty much have one here. You know, no. I just bought it. I was like, I like harder espresso style drinks and lattes. Sure. I can make those now. They're not as good as what I would buy at a fancy place. Just like if I go to Walmart and I buy a cut of meat, I don't expect it to be the finest steak that has ever been eaten, though I can cook a hell of a steak. What's, when, when was that Nespresso pod roasted? I'm curious. I don't fucking know. I look at the, I don't know when. It's sealed in materials. Yes. I don't know. I That's the answer to your question. Is I have no fucking clue. It doesn't say roasted on on the date. Probably because it's vacuum sealed. Like a boss. Yeah. 
I don't what's, know. What's better, canned mushrooms or fresh mushrooms? Canned. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> fucking gross. <laughs> no, that's just me being a contrarian. All mushrooms are gross. Anyway. That's, I, oh. No, I don't like them. Don't like them. You can say garlic or, you know, roasted garlic, and then double will be all up in your shit. This is true. I actually conceded that in the thread. It's, and he's why. right. I mean, he's right. He's not here he's to right. tell him that, and he won't listen to this episode, but he's 100% correct. Mm. No. Yep. Actually, he might listen but to But garlic will work in a pinch, and that's kind of the same way as your uh, Nespresso, Nespresso machine. It'll work mm. in a pinch. It gets the job done. It's not yep. like... It's not the best. It's not anything near what you're going to get at a place, right? But yes. I don't think you buy it expecting that. And if you do, you're an idiot. So This is true. There you go. I'm going to back you up that far. But That's I will fine. say, I do enjoy my machine. It's good. Makes good shit that I enjoy good enough. Look, at the end of the day, coffee is a utility for me. Like I need caffeine to like, mm. move. Yeah. So right. Like, yeah. You know, like fuck. Like I'm a barista. That's my like, you know, craft mm-hmm. skills. That whatever. Right. But like, uh, and so people ask me, you know, what is best, and I have answers for that. But ultimately, if you do fucking instant coffee, I don't give a shit. Like if, if that's what has to wake you up, that's fine. Um, drink what you like. Yeah, but my yeah, brother's you're gonna into ask that. Me, I'm going to give you a fucking opinion. That's going to be. I mean, my brother's into that, and he bought and like clean a- your damn pots. I, yeah, my brother's into coffee making and baristaing in his spare time. Yeah, yeah. And he bought a machine that's like fucking killer, huge, stainless steel. Cool. Replaced all mm. the components, did all the shit, made it legit, cleans it like a madman. Yeah. That's, he could make something on that level. And his shit is good. I've right. tried it. That's great. But, I mean, that's kind of what he, what you're saying is you either go to that level or you're drinking Diet Coke of, of, of coffee. Yeah, yeah, and ultimately, like, that, that's fine. I mean, it's not going... Like, I'll drink diner coffee and not care. Um, right, it, right. It depends. But yeah. don't be like, why isn't my coffee as good as this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I guess more to my point, it's like, don't buy these fancy machines, right, and then don't clean them. You know what I mean? Like, you have to maintain your shit and, like, if you're gonna, you, the machine doesn't do all the work for you. The machine is a, a tool and you get what you pay for to a certain extent. And then the rest of it is up, up to you. Um, and in the same regard, in relation to league, playing fresh champions sometimes is a good idea too, which is a- uh, Hard ooh, transition, all right. What doing right now. So, I don't know if you listened to last episode or maybe it was the one before. Well, hold on. Before you get into this, I have a uh, a brief Patreon announcement. Uh, Do we? Congratulations. This episode is donated to our show's sponsor, Castro. Castro's got uh, big old fancy big balls. And he came in and dropped a fat $100 donation on the podcast. That's true. Ooh. So he gets a show named after him this week. Hence the, what did I name the show again? It's something like... Uh, oh, they're, 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 let them find out. They know, they know what yeah, they'll name, figure it out. Uh, they'll figure yeah. it out. Sweet. So, so. so, Castro, this show is brought to you by Castro, your handsome friend and mine. Whenever you're thinking League of Legends, think Castro. All right, go on. Yes. So, you know why he donated that $100, right? Yes. But you yes. should probably tell the crowd. I should they, tell everyone. They're else. on the um, edges of their Castro-based seats. <laughs> right. So I mentioned, um, perhaps in a a drunken stupor, to play whatever champion anyone wanted me to for 40 games in ranked um, for $100 for the podcast, which is below minimum wage, I think everyone should Correct. Um, so I'm, I'm not... Like if you if you think this is a way to make a living, it really isn't. However, I am now playing Talon mid for Castro's request or command at his behest, <laughs> um, and I have to play just that in a ranked solo queue. Uh, I'm not allowed to surrender before 20 minutes um, for 40 games straight, and I am officially six games in as of this moment. What's your current I- standings? Um, 
I have won three games, or no, four games. I've won four games and lost two. So yeah. not terrible. Of those I'm four games, how many in a did series, you... by the uh, way. Oh, of those four games, how many did you carry? Zero. None of those games. <laughs> 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 well, I did make plays assassinating the carry on the enemy team near the mid end game, which opened up objectives for my team. So I wasn't useless. I also didn't feed uh -huh. two of those games, but the rest I did for sure. So make of that what you will. I'm having a blast though. Like, um, so this is, I've always thought this was a good challenge to do for myself. And I've kind of initiated this challenge of my, my own accord over the years. Uh, some of you may remember me trying to play Vladimir or um, or Cassiopeia or things like that, like picking really hard shit and trying to play it. So in other words, I'm I'm buying an espresso machine, right? <laughs> like, right. Fair right. Enough. You gotta sit down and like make this really high quality shit work um, with very little experience and no maintenance whatsoever. So um, going against my own advice, but yeah, it's um it's been good and and talent is actually not that complicated in comparison to some of the other projects I've taken on. But he's very different from what I'm used to doing, which is, um, you know, playing only AP champions, playing only ranged champions, and typically playing like a pussy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I uh, am not doing that at the moment. I am limit testing, as they say. Okay, so have you put in some work to figure out, like, where Talon's power spikes are? Like, what are Talon's good matchups? How are you supposed to play Talon? You did any of that, or are you just like, I'm on it? And I've been kind of just doing it by feel. Um, I have looked up a couple of things. Like I'm, I'm doing the gore drink. Like I, I wanted to do electric beat, right? Like that was my first instinct. Was like the, I'm gonna do it Zill's way, which you know, I almost took Smite um, mid, but I didn't. I finally, I was like, I'm gonna look at mobile fire and see what. I'm just, just get just fucking with you. Expression on his face. Uh, is hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, any of you who know me know that I do my own thing with my own champions, right? And I, I played Smite Zill top forever, and I've, I've played Smite Teemo forever. And yeah, it wouldn't be out of character for me to like come up with something equally less optimal um, in this regard. However, I am I'm doing a little bit of research, not a lot. Um, I have I just learned the hard way about the Zed Talon matchup and the various power spikes <laughs> that happen happened there so that was fun um anivia was also not a very fun matchup for me although going over her wall was pretty rewarding i have to say oh, um, i hadn't even considered that as a possibility yeah you could just you could just hop a skip over the wall she's like i got you bitch and you're like no motherfucker that's great um but yeah i don't, I don't know i've i've um i think flanking when like the other team isn't really sure what they're doing and your team is starting to kind of like coalesce in a certain way. You can kind of get an idea of what to do and go around the long way and try to find a way to assassinate somebody. That's kind of my favorite part of this so far. Just very Assassin's Creed fantasy fulfilled in League of Legends. <laughs> so um, big fan of that. But yeah, I don't know. Any any advice, any any uh, pointers on, on talent, on assassins in general? What do you sure. got? If you uh, jump at somebody, make sure there's like a cart full of straw on the ground right. that you can land in. Right. right. Now, uh, I don't know, Talon, interesting. How much are you roaming? Because with Talon, you should be roaming all the fucking time. Because of the ability to jump over walls, it lets him roam in different gank patterns where it's unexpected and you appear like eluding vision. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm not uh, okay. So we all know how much I roam now to play right. my current champions, which is zero, right? So mm -hmm. with talent, I'm I'm roaming at least three times that, uh, which is zero. Right, so, <laughs> infinitely uh, more, even <laughs> really? you go that far. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I'm probably roaming uh, twice during late phase, which is not great. But like, we're getting there. We're we're working on it. If you, you know, so like the talons that I've seen that are really effective and keep yes. in mind, I could bring on like exiles plays talon. I could bring him on for an episode and have him really go into it. But 
if there's any demand for that. I don't know if the you know listeners even care, but what I have seen that successful talons do is like at level three, I believe it's level two and three. There's like an enormous power spike there mm-hmm. where you can ease somebody. You hit them on the rake outward, and then as it yeah. comes back, that's another stack. And then you cue jumping to them to get the third stack for right. pretty substantial burst that really can't be traded with at two. Mm-hmm. No one else can mm-hmm. do that at right. two. Like, no one else can do that level of damage. So you're super strong there. But if you get to a point where you can't freeze and that's not abusable and you can't lock them out with at that level of power spike, sure. then what you want to do is rake the wave, push it, Get, get it into tower as fast as possible, roam to bot lane through these avenues where they won't probably see you coming because you can leap jungle walls Yeah, and, and get there. Also, vision control is super important on Talon because the one thing that you don't want to do is like fly through the jungle and like run into some shit. Even though you sure. could probably kill their jungler if you're high enough health, but then again, like that's also going to really fuck up your gank if you like run right in front of the jungler and can't get yeah. So it's just a potential to burn a lot of times. So ward up buffs so you have a rough idea of where the jungler's at on which side mm-hmm. of the map and then use that information to roam the opposite direction. Okay. And see if that helps increase your like lead getting. And then... Yeah. Try to kill them at like level two and level three. Yeah. Also, if you're able to uh, keep an eye on the enemy jungler at all, if you see them going back from like a rough trade in the lane or if they're going back to farm in a yeah. risky situation, you can go yeah. catch them and get a free kill that way, I, maybe a buff. I think that may be the cash money play that I need, need to start looking for. Because um, I know that even if it's not successful, if I at least have a good trade and then get out or whatever, like there's nothing that tilts an enemy jungler more than being invaded and then having their team not come to help them, which oh, is it's... pretty much par for the course with anything that Talon will do. So, yeah, that sounds great. I'm excited, man. I got, I mean, uh, let's see. Yeah, so 34 more games. Um, I don't know. You guys have – so I'm, I'm currently in my series for gold right now. Um, they're starting to take bets. No. Yeah, if, for anyone listening, if you want to join – Feel free to go to the One Trick Talon uh, text chat in the little Discord, and then you can like I'm putting all screenshots of, of match history and everything else in there, and people are taking bets on what my win rate's going to be and stuff by the time we're done. So um, yeah, come on in, It'll be fun. You and know, like, me all you want to. That's I'm, I'm all for it. I was actually considering opening this up and doing the same thing. And just yeah. be like, hey, you can pick one for me too. I since this is literally like the only fun I have of a day, I was gonna knock it up a notch and be like, okay, either more money or less games. But I don't know. Maybe I'll do it the same. But I don't know. I think you I've, should. I think it's a good trade off because like it's a chunk of change, but so is forty games. So, right. Right. And know? I mean, keep in mind, like this is how I unload at the end of a day. And, sure. You know, same. To be fair, but even I if also, the games aren't fun, the attention you get is worth it. Right. Right. I mean, <laughs> fair enough. But I was thinking about doing that. I don't know if we get a lot of feedback on the channel. I may do that if people are super excited to ruin my day as well. I can try that. I, you know, I still want to see Danger play Samira for forty games. I, I would give almost anything. Like I said, I don't know how he's going to do that because she's banned like every game. So. You know. It's true. But, like, yeah, I've just been, like, I played my first uh, ranked game this season. Just logged in to do one. Because Hash wanted to duo with me. And I said, okay, that's fine. Like, I like playing with Hash. He's a good guy. And so, okay. Well, the problem is I'm still set at my ELO from last season. And... He got reset, and of course, you know, whenever they reset you, it's hard, and so they throw you way down. And so he got reset into, like, high silver or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I played my first game. I won it, uh, and that put me at gold four. So 
cool. I'm gold four now, but at least I can play with him. So I think we're going to play some together. Um, but yeah, if I were to do this, I would specifically have a caveat of at least let me finish my placements before you ruin me. Absolutely. And yeah. I mean, I finished my placements first and that's fine. But also you're not the only one who has been inspired by this. Our friend Nick here actually asked me to pick a champion for him to play for 40 games in ranked. It looks um, fun. And uh, take, take a wild guess what this man is playing. So he plays champions like Skarner, Pantheon, you know, uh, uh, Ramus. Ramus. Shit like that. Yeah, ra a lot of Ramus. Okay, give so, me a uh, hint. Is it at least a jungle champion still, or is it just... Could be. Could be. It's. I picked a champion you could flex, because I know this man is a film man. Uh, yeah, it's... He's also one of the original champions of League of Legends. That's a good thing for you. Oof. Is it Nunu? No, it's TF. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> He's got me suffering the TF. It, yeah, it's it, not bad. He just has some he, really unfavorable he, matchups. It's, <laughs> it's definitely not bad, but he was one of my worst champions in the moment he told me TF. I was like, ah. <laughs> ah. As I See, said, like, I've been playing with Nick since 2015, so I know this man's weakness. Well, like, it's like if I were to do this, and this is my fear, is that I'm going to okay. do this and I'm going to say, okay, you guys can pick somebody for me. And some asshole is going to be like, here's a hundred bucks, Soraka. And I'm be like, <laughs> no, fuck. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd have to, but, uh, you know, that God, that would suck. And then it's just like, well, am I done with League? Is this what killed it? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> Not with a bang, but with no, like a just fuck it, kill myself. I'm done. I don't like Soraka though. I mean, shit. Like, I've played everything at some point or another, and I guess at some point I would play. Maybe, probably not. Probably leave Soraka in the sugar. But if if they were to tell you, say, a champion like uh, Yasuo or Zed, would you switch up the role that you're going to play? I think you'd have to. I can't. Okay, so keep in mind, this is coming from a guy who's played Fizz support. To great success, by the way. I, it worked when I played it. Sounds um, strong. It's not. Uh, it requires money. The problem is, it's, it's good early whenever base damages are really all that matters. And then yeah. it falls off super duper hard later because... To be an assassin, you have to generate that gold advantage, and you have to be a high enough level that you can kill other shit. Yes. And so at some Therefore point... Your problem or, erupts around level 11. Yeah, I was going to say 10. But yes, <laughs> that's, that's... Yeah, 10 or 11. Right in that neighborhood, you just start becoming totally useless, and you don't have utility, and you don't have gold. And that's where you better have won the game early or frustrated them so bad or but, chain killed them to a degree that you're actually potent. You know, yep. like those, your win cons are smaller than usual and require nut busting power to get. That sounds exactly like you. Yeah. Yeah. Not particularly so, nut busting power. <laughs> that's right? that's, that's, yeah! Then, you know, <laughs> that's what it is. So, I mean, yeah, I think you could do that, but like Zed support's going to suffer from the same issue and be fucking terrible if you don't get ahead. But if you right. played it right into the right poke lane or whatever, then it could work. But I, I mean, you, you, and you can't go top because the top laners are too tanky for Zed to pop. And so, okay, yeah, you, you have to go mid. He can't jungle. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I would think you'd have to. Huh. Yeah, and that is that is also a concern for me because I am good at, like, a thing. And then I have half of another thing I've been working on. And then there's top jungle and ADC. Well, I'm okay at ADC, but... Top in jungle, like, eh. if somebody yeah. said, like, oh, you're going to play Riven, I'm going to be like, shit. Because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't know any of the matchups. I don't know the champion. It requires, like, 100 intricate combos. And I feel like that's like saying, you're going to play Mozart on the keyboard. Like, good luck. 
you never played piano before, but you'll learn it. <laughs> and I was like, uh, you know, I, forty games in, he can play a scale. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, yeah. I, I feel like the challenge is beneficial in that way, though. I like, of course, I play Phil, so I would love to advocate for other people to play more and go outside their comfort zone to learn a bit more but I, I think you do really benefit from learning a bit of other roles and knowing what uh what they're doing and being able to apply it to your own lane maybe it improves you in some way to know what they're doing okay but i mean like to say that that's that's true you learn more about the game you experience it more you have a more 3d view of what the game is because you understand what laners want in certain times in certain areas because you've lived it and so it makes you a more well-rounded player and it makes you understood. At the same time, the process of going through that feels a lot like just stretching your anus. <laughs> I mean, that's like... Speaking of nut-busting power, yeah. Yeah, speaking of nut-busting power, it's like you start off, I'm kind of learning something new, like a different character in a different role. That's a carrot. You know, throwing me a... Like, just say, oh, now you're a top laner. I'm like, that's a cucumber. And then you say, like, it's ribbon. And it's like, that's a watermelon. I don't, like, nope. Like, I don't know that's going to fit. So that's just 40, <laughs> that's 40 rank games of me sitting down really hard on a watermelon. I'm not into it. I'm just not into it. But some people are. Some people are. And that's yeah, why yeah. the internet exists, friends. I'm sure you can find it. <laughs> Please no. So, you know, that said, like, I don't know, it's a cool idea. I'm somewhat afraid of how... Oh, you can trust this community. They won't do you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just blinking at you right now because that's an incredulous... I, no, no, I can't. I cannot. It's not like they've ever made your experience in community games unfun. Or yeah, un yeah. Anyway. You'd be like, "Oh, cool, Blake's doing it. Oh, yeah, here's here's hundred bucks. You're in Ivern, Maine now." And I'm like, "I think that would be good fuck. for you. I really. Why would, be, why would that be good for me? Strong right now, at least. But why would that be good for me? What uh, What would be good about this? Uh, well, well, I I do think like okay. How many champions do I play? Am I open-minded in the least, at least on the surface? No. But when it comes down to it, when somebody says, you're going to do this, I go, okay, I'm going to try. And then we're going to try to learn. And I feel like you might be missing that piece of this. <laughs> it's just a little bit of effort. <laughs> well, I mean, sure. But I'm also like the guy that Attitude. played fucking everything in support. You know what I mean? Like sure. I've done but that's that, your stick, man. And and playing Teemo a thousand different ways is mine. Right, right. <laughs> that's it. It's not the same as coming to the game with an open mind and trying something new, genuinely. And when oh, we God. ask our people, when they ask for coaching, right, and they're like, "But I always do it this way." What do we say? No, fuck you. <laughs> like you're gonna do it my way because yeah, you true. asked for help. <laughs> <laughs> And that's why I hesitate to ask for this. Because they're just going to be like, and you're singed, True. man. That's and I'm gonna be like, oof. Like, singed? I think singed would be awesome. I don't, like, that's one I'm actually less afraid of. But the reason I mention it is because it's entirely, this champion doesn't translate into anything else. <laughs> no, There's no. no other champion that plays like that. And you're just like, oh, okay. Like, hopefully yeah. I like it. And then you're just, I don't know, man. I hesitate. I mean, would it be possible to kind of just say, well, accept this one champion, maybe like one exception, or do you think that's just killing the fun of it? No, that kills the fun of it. You can't do that. I think it kills the fun of it. I think hmm. you have to open yourself up for those Soraka bullets, and if they land, they land. You know, Just, just a friendly reminder that Zoe exists. That's also true. Oof. Yeah, I, I, I okay. Zoe, Zoe is a champion that actually ticks all of my boxes that I have not played yet, like ever. So, what are your boxes exactly? Make the other team miserable. 
That's my box. That, that's a box. There are no boxes. Like, it's just the one. <laughs> okay. Also, is uh, Cheeky only has one move. Um, it, it, people. I uh, like one dimensional champions that piss yes, people I do. off. Yeah. I okay. Do. I'm a simple man. Huh. Simple man with simple pleasures. Well, you gotta like, simple zil. Yeah, man. Like mashed potatoes. Like Fuck it. It. I'm done. Great. Simple zil's wafers. Do you like the experience <laughs> of making other people suffer at your hands? Come true. home to simple zil's. <laughs> so, all right. I think uh, I think we've said enough on that topic. I I will I'll make a decision by the end of the podcast whether I'm going to open it up. That's or not. fine. I, I'm just going to warn people out there because I don't want people wasting money. Real quick, is not everybody could donate at the same time, right? Because yeah. we can't have to plan right. 80, 120 games. That's not going to happen. I'm not going to do the same. So you have to arrange it in chat first before. It yeah, do, Castro do kind of lucked out with like hitting it up with the. You know, the one time. Yeah, he was the, he was the first. He was donating $100 to get him to play 120 games. That's just not going to pan out. Save your money. Talk to him first. Yeah. Cool. Sensible yeah. sensible spending here, folks. Yeah, I mean, he had a foot in the door, by the way. That's right. He, like, that's he right. got in there first, so that's fine. Right. But then, the you know, the other thing I will say is, uh, you know, thank you for supporting the show, Castro. I appreciate you. That's why this podcast is dedicated to you and your honor. This message brought to you by Castro. Uh, you know, that being said, some of you may be going, well, what happened to last week's episode? Where's that? Well, it was supposed to be a TFT episode, but apparently they've got a guest on the line who's like master or grandmaster or something in TFT. So we're trying to work around their schedule and it didn't come together in time. So we're yeah. doing this week's episode and you may get a double episode this week. So... Yeah. But that's why, and that's what's happening. So we're just going to kind of release that whenever they get it done, and yeah. it'll it'll be an extra episode somewhere along the way to make up for last week because that's when we. I've I've been playing a lot of TFT myself. I'm actually kind of excited for for this episode. So yeah, stay tuned. I have, I have not touched it and will not be involved. So exciting! <laughs> All right, Don, run. Huh. I've given you some opportunity to think. Uh, what is, what do you want to talk about league wise? What, what's the thing that's hot on your mind? Ah, I didn't realize I was supposed to be coming up with a topic. No, I'm you, totally you putting you on the to. spot. This we'll is it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. Favorite champion, favorite moment. What do you do to get better? How do you get better? What do you focus on? Do you have any tips for any areas? These are all things that you could choose to talk about. What are the things that annoy you the most about this community? Oh, about the <laughs> oh, I don't know about that bag of worms or can of worms, however it's said. But as, as far as league goes, I don't know. I just wish more people played more roles. I really do think the Phil thing is. Uh, I I know everyone likes the uh, just choosing a role and going with it. I can't do it personally because if I play the same role, I my tendency is to just start playing wacky stuff that I shouldn't be playing that role or playing stuff I'm not good at instead of playing it seriously. So Phil is my way of have, branching out and doing a few things and being able to stay focused in a way, even though it's not the same role. I, I, I feel like more people can learn from doing multiple roles because I just got bored myself. And when I, when I started learning the other roles, I was improving from knowing other roles. Eh. But so, otherwise. I mean, it, it... There is some truth to that, cause like me, um, me playing mid has kind of remade me focus again. Like that's horribly worded. It has caused me to refocus on exactly when I have kill pressure in a lane, and it's taken me off some of the autopilot that I've settled into in bot lane, where I'm like, oh, that's a kill, and then I go for it, right? Because I don't exactly know when kills are in mid, I have to be very cognizant of that. I also have to like pre-plan my trades because yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know. Like if I'm like, oh, if they're going to do this, then I need to do this. And because of that, like I've become a lot more effective 
back in support again because I'm not as much on autopilot as I was before. Because it, yeah, it's it's again, it's like refocusing energy. It's caused me to have to focus again, which is a good thing. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe you get that from Phil, but I would think that the danger would be the opposite. It's like with Phil, you're not really focusing on anything because you're bouncing from place to place to place. At least mm-hmm. that's how it would be to me. How do you get around that? What do you do to stop that? I mean, I still have a limited champion pool per role, uh, and I will take time at, uh, at times to just like go into normals or on like an alt, and I'll practice a certain role if I feel like that one's lacking. Like uh, last season, I felt my... Uh, marksman or ad carry was the one that was lacking so i separately went and practiced that one so that that wouldn't be the one that's holding my rank back and this season i felt a whole lot better or this in preseason i felt a whole lot better about it and i have a few uh, marksmen that i feel are more reliable than all the others so i have a set like two to three champions in each role or like if it's a flexible champion that makes it easier you can just take him know the champion between but a couple that, and that's the thing i was gonna ask is do you intentionally overlap them into roles yes definitely because that definitely helps with keeping the champion pool down and just knowing a champion is also very important it's they always one tricks make it very high if you take a one trick off their champion it does hurt them but they know the game very well uh, so less champions know the better. If you're going to play something like Phil, having some overlapping champions is nice. Okay, what champions do you recommend for, like, let's say, learning jungle? For learning jungle, I mean, simple ones to start with. Uh, Warwick is good in a way to start with because he's uh, pretty healthy. Uh, Mumu is normally pretty easy. Uh, he blocks a lot of damage. He doesn't have too much to hit. One skill shot, large AOE stun. You land you just press the button at the right time and you uh fix the team fight and uh uh let's see who else is a good jungle What's champion the most mechanically intense champion that you regularly fill with in ranked ooh most mechanically intense oh now that i think about it nothing extremely mechanically intense yeah, it's been some time since i played the point here is that like you are playing simple stuff i also will say you tend to play things that are not the flavor of the month that are like no one, t- the patch notes don't touch very often, you know, whether it's mm-hmm. Starter or, or Ramus. Um, and you kind of like, you, you still build that familiarity with those characters. Uh, that is true. And I've seen you play things like Echo but in, jun- in Jungle, but like you don't, um, and you'll, you may flex that mid. But yeah, you didn't play that when Echo first came out. Like you, you didn't pick up Echo until he'd been uh, nerfed substantially multiple times. So yeah, that is true. I don't like to. So I, I can't pick up a champion and just have them being changed quite often. So yeah, I will avoid yeah. some of the newer That's champions. Like, yeah. I'll wait until they seem like they're a little more settled or they're not about to be having any massive changes. Yeah. Um, now that you have me on, on the spot there, though, I'm kind of thinking the most mechanically intensive champions I play would be anything of the marksman role. Uh, yeah. So, But that's not uh, exactly like a Yasuo or anything along those lines. Yeah. Yeah, no, nothing too mechanically intensive now that you mention it. A lot of Skarner. <clears throat> a lot of Skarner. Um, yeah, your Skarner top's pretty wicked. I, I, I don't know. Like, um, I I think one of your strengths also is that, like, you have a sort of macro sense of the game and a shot-calling ability that I have not met with a lot of players that have that. And and I think it's from playing all the different roles um, that you've gained that sort of experience. It's, it's sort of like the opposite of the, the map awareness with one tricks. Um, instead of, mm-hmm. like where you you know play the same champion all over all the all the time so that like um you know basic operations become second nature and you can pay more attention to the map you like have played each role differently so or each role so that you know when you're experiencing say a jungler ganking bot you know that the, the jungler is not top and even though that seems like fairly obvious it's like this just instinctual thing of you know what else on the map can be taken 
based on what's happening to you where you are. Of course. I mean, like if there's a play cool. happening in the bot lane, you you got to make up for it sometime, uh, somehow. Or yeah. if you're able to, if you're on the other side of the map, why not take the Rift Herald? Why not make a play for top, take the tower, something along those lines? If they're not there, you want to be there. For those people who like reach high ranks in like what some may consider weaker champions, such as like an Amumu in like Diamond mm-hmm. Master tier, uh, yeah. like an Amumu, they can't really handle a champion invading their jungle. They can't fight them off. And if your lanes don't have prio, what do you do? Well, you just got to know that they're in your jungle and you got to be where they're not, which is their jungle. Yeah. Have you, I mean, so far with the talent, have you picked up anything yourself? Do you think you, you're you learning any new skills from it? Um, so weirdly, I feel like I'm learning um, champions' weaknesses and strengths a little bit differently, for, like from from Talon's perspective. So like, for instance, I just played the Talon Zed matchup, right? Um, and when Zed presses his ult and goes into shadow, right? And like uh, is untargetable. Um, as Teemo, like the worst thing that could happen when he did that was I could miss an auto attack, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it like, it would cancel. But like with Talon, like Zed's able to dodge my ult <laughs> and like, and my, and possibly my W, sort of like half my combo or more by pressing his his R button, you know? And so I'm like, I'm learning that like, okay, this is a strength of a champion that I didn't realize before um, based on the fact that my champion is is designed to hit its abilities in order to function. Um, so yeah, that, that, I don't know. There's some, some of that. It's, that's a little, an oddball example, I guess. Um, and then, I don't know, man, just playing melee in general is just so, so different from range. I'm so much more aware of like, how the trading stance can be exploited on melee champions um, as you know versus ranged, and that's not why something. Don't you I... go, why don't you go into that a little bit for people who maybe don't understand what it is you're talking about? Yeah. Um, so, like, so for instance, um, trading stance is when you're watching your the enemy player walk up and hit a minion or last hit a minion, right? And usually the trading stance is right when they're about to kill that minion or when you see them tracking that minion and that's their next move, you go to attack them right as they start to attack that minion. That's when they cannot trade back with you. Um, and it's especially exploitable as a range champion because you're, you're standing far away and they have to walk up very close to you and get within range in order to last hit. So that, that like critical moment is where um, as like a team of player, if you're not taking advantage of that, you are going to lose. Like you have, you have to be aware of that. You have to take advantage of that, but it's so much more, Oh, I'm so much more aware of it being on the other side of that. now. Um, and I'm like, God, I feel so vulnerable. I can get to hit this minion. And you know, now I know what it feels like for, for that talent on the other side when he's about to get hit uh, or when he's trying to last hit. So yeah, does that make, does that make sense? Is that clear? Yeah, no, I think so. I just wanted to like, like, I always preach about watching the UNSW Law Society videos, which, if you guys are curious what those are, they're linked on our YouTube. I made a, like, a folder or whatever, like a playlist of all of them. Yeah, and, and I should probably watch the one on Assassins, yeah, which I, I mean, think is number seven. Now they are starting. basically tutorial videos of how to play League at the highest level. Starting with, like, these are the things you need to do to exploit advantages. And doing all of those things will get you to Diamond. I mean, it's literally a how-to-get-to-Diamond guide. You know, and and it's, I don't, if everyone has listened to the podcast for 305 episodes now, I do not count bullshit. Like, I am not going to tell you something is great when I don't think it is. The only resource that I have consistently said you need to be watching these because yeah. it's a waste of your time to play the game without having watched them is the UNSW Law Society videos. In those videos, they describe what trading stance is, and that's what Zill was explaining. Yeah, and, and, and this game has changed so many times over the years, patch updates, whatnot. The game is a completely different game in so many ways than what it used to be. But those videos have stayed timeless because the core, like, elements of gameplay are in those videos and very well explained and 
easily done so so that you can replicate it. It may not be fun to like break your normal habits and like try to replicate what they're doing there, but it's what you should do if you want to get better at the game. And it's just it's the it's the core it's core gameplay elements being demonstrated, and you're just being taught those. Like you have you you really should <laughs> touch those if you want to get any better. Um, but yeah, I, I reference them all the time uh, and and terminology from that when i especially when i'm talking about like learning a new champion or how to get better um just like i mean the trading stands for is a huge point of that yeah and so they're like okay whenever you're you're by the dying creep whenever they step forward to shoot it you shoot them and then you back off so they can't shoot you again and it's a free trade you know or if they shoot an ability you you shoot one of them if they unload all of their abilities in you you burst them back like these are things that even if you take a little more damage, you are required to do in order to be an effective player of the game. And I think mm-hmm. that, like, though, again, those lessons are timeless. And, you know, I don't forward resources that I think suck. Like, we just don't do that. So, mm-hmm. you know, it is what it is. That being said, if I'm going to spend this much time talking about something, Look it up and watch those things. It's enormously helpful uh, how to get better. It's like got a thousand plus games worth of knowledge in a few videos that you can watch and digest. Right? So it's not a lot of that in terms of league content. I mean, there's lots of people that have videos that are like how to get better or how to how to do this. And like a lot of it's just clickbait kind of stuff. I feel like, like if you're like Watch a challenger play in silver. You're not going to yeah. learn a goddamn thing from that. No, you're not. Like, you're just not. Because you're not a challenger in silver. You're a silver player in silver. And he's doing so many things on such a different level than you that you can't hope to emulate it. Yeah, These the are... last five, four or five seasons of League have come during a time where YouTube is really about like people making content for, to be watched and not about making content to help a community or to like inform people or teach people and these videos were made back in a time of gaming when that was more prevalent i think when especially lola was games. new when That's... lola was new and and when starcraft was still relevant and it's prime yeah so um and and th- that community i think brought that sort of mentality to league but now it's just become all it's all memes it's all fucking <laughs> you know, clickbait. Well, and I mean, yeah, it's like, oh, look at this guy smurf on all these kids. And it's like, everybody's yeah. like, ah, wow, how do I do that? And it's like, what's the new hot build? And you're not worrying about like, what are the fundamentals that right. I need to develop? Like, I don't care if you can 360 dunk if you can't dribble. Right. If you can't dribble, you're mm-hmm. never going to get close enough to the basket to do a 360 dunk. Yeah. You know, you need to work on your fundies. And then, and that's not fun. That requires grind and effort and practice and to know what it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like, and this is what kills me is like, you guys play youth sports when you were a kid, like basketball, football, any of that? No, I was homeschooled. Okay. Same. So I did, and I'll use my experience as a comparable. If I just tried to learn how to play basketball by playing myself, or by going to the playground and playing with a bunch of other seven-year-olds, mm-hmm. I would still suck ass at basketball. And I would hit a limit to how good I could get. Because I would still be shooting like with two hands on my chest and throwing the ball at the net because I was little and I didn't have the upper arm strength to actually shoot properly. I never would have figured out to shoot a basketball in the correct way by myself as a child. And that's the way people are wanting to learn league. It's like, I don't want to, I don't want to have a coach or somebody knowledgeable tell me how to get better. I just want to get better by doing something a thousand times. Well, it's like, yeah, but if you're doing a shot with two hands, like throwing the ball up at the goal, there's a limit to how good you can get doing that. It takes both. It takes teaching and it takes practice. Mm -hmm. You have to practice what's being taught. And if you don't do that, then you're wasting your well, time. Well, you have to practice the right skills. Right, that's and what that's, I mean. That, yeah, like, but you have to identify what those are. And that's mm-hmm. where I think the problem is, is like, you need 
that's where those videos are so fucking valuable because it's like, oh, these are the things I need to practice. Now, in my next thousand games, I can focus on those things and get noticeably bleh. I can get noticeably better at a goal instead of just playing to play. If that makes sense. And so, uh, like, it's it's frustrating to me because I don't know how many times. And, and then I have people that are like, Blake, coach me at the game. And I'll watch their game. And I'm like, you need to watch these videos. And then they'll ask me to coach them again. And I'm like, you haven't watched those videos. Because you're not doing any of the things in it. You know, and it's almost like... Like, I don't know. I, this is going to come off as cold, and I don't mean it to. But it's almost as if you're wasting my time by asking me to coach you if you're not going to put in the work to do to make yourself actually better at the game. Well, there's how, like, 80% of these are teachers fail. But, yeah. <laughs> and, well, I, and that's the thing is I'll still not tell you no. Like, we'll do it. And I'll tell you to watch the fucking video. And then if you don't, like, come on, man. That's just almost disrespectful of my time. Yeah. Right? But I'm still a teaching resource. I still want to help people where I can. And I can't, fuck, I can't even turn it off if I wanted to at this point. So I will still help you. But it's like there are certain things that you can easily do to help yourself. I know this because it's the same things that I did. I watched those videos. I incorporated those videos into my play. I It opened my eyes as to how broad the game actually is. And it gave me something to focus on that's internal rather than external. And I think it actually made me less frustrated with... Well, first it made me more frustrated with the game, and then it made me less frustrated with the game. And the, the and by that, I mean, it made me more frustrated at the game because I'm like, I'm now aware of things that the people at my level are not aware of. And that's frustrating because you're like, oh, we could be doing this right now. And they're not doing this. Oh, they're so bad. I'm so good. And then it made me less frustrated because I'm like, wait a minute. I'm actually improving. I'm getting out of the area where nobody knows shit and getting into an area where people kind of know things. That's it's less frustrating because I can see myself meaningfully improving. So, I mean, that right there should be meat enough for anybody to jump on board on this thing. Don, have you watched those videos by any chance? Oh, yes. Actually, the... Uh... They're kind of what helped me get uh, almost to Diamond last season. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Whoa. Testimonials, friend. <laughs> uh, you know, otherwise I could just slap you on the forehead and be like, you are Diamond! And then it won't work and, you know, <laughs> contribute a bunch of money to the podcast. Well, and, I mean... Oh, sorry. No, you're good. Shoot. Go ahead. I was going to say, they the... I initially was a little afraid. I heard of y'all talk about the videos plenty on here before, but I honestly didn't watch them until about last season because I, I kind of didn't like the idea of uh, someone ha- telling me how to play the game. To a certain extent, I, I like to go off of my own knowledge and play the game how I want to play it or how I know it and build it up and be like, oh, I'm, I'm better than that. But watching those videos, they, they really aren't telling you how to play the game. They're kind of just giving you general information like, oh, well, I mean, you can it, you can do it this way because uh, if you wait to do this, this is what happens. If you wait for all of their uh, their big CC to be down and team fight is A to carry, you actually have an opportunity to attack them sort of deal. Like they're not telling you how to play the game exactly. They're just saying this th- this is how uh, like a good idea for how you do it because this is what happens. They don't have recourse in this situation. It's just telling you it three minus two equals one. Like if they auto attack a minion, they can't be auto attacking you. So you auto attack them when they're walking up to uh to hit that minion. That's the trading stance essentially, right? Mm-hmm. It's that's it's the not, trading stance in a nutshell, yes. 
it's not as invasive on telling you how to play the games I expected them to be. And they're all just overall very good knowledge that help you in pretty much every situation. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's a very good point. And you keep in mind, they're giving you the basic level knowledge. It's your job to build your play style and your champions from that knowledge, like using that knowledge as a guideline, right? Like, you know, in the same sense that, like, somebody's going to teach you a martial arts style, but you're going to still do shit, like, differently, right? Like, every student of a martial arts has a different mm -hmm. twist to how it is they fight. You know, it's like that. But if I said, like, you're going to go fight this kung fu master, uh, I gave you some boxing gloves and a speed bag in your basement and told you nothing to do. You're going to get your ass kicked by that guy. You know, hard. Like, mm -hmm. Cobra Kai style. He's just going to fucking rip your face off. So, I think, like, getting a good baseline, getting something to actually build on. Like, you can't have a style if you suck. Right, like I've never played piano in my life. I don't have a style at playing piano. I'm just now learning how to play the guitar. I'm fucking atrocious. I do not have a style. Right? Style is something that you build after you have a baseline level of expertise. Yeah, style and instincts, yeah. yeah. Build those things after the fact, right? Like the, that's the, that's the icing on the cake. You have to bake the fucking cake first. Yeah. You know, otherwise, you're not going to impress anybody with candles and icing sitting on the ground. It's just sad. Ants. Yeah. I was gonna say, that's just sad. Nobody's blowing out that birthday cake. You're gonna be like, why did you waste all that icing? It's gross. Yeah. That's how you get ants. <laughs> that's how you get ants. Oh, Archer. Okay, <laughs> cool. With that, we'll wrap it up. Thank you guys uh, for your support. You know what? Fuck it. If anybody wants to donate, I'll join this challenge. I'm with you, Zill. So, <laughs> fine. Awesome. You can burn 40 games of my life. I One-time offer for now. If it goes fine, we may do two. Who knows? But... I will go ahead and do that. Of course, if you donate that, I'm also going to give you every tier of whatever below that. So you get a show named after you. We'll review your videos or whatever. Like, so you can go watch some other videos. So you can go watch some other videos. Oh, fuck, I'll watch them <laughs> with you. I don't care. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. And then, of course, like, I do want to say I have appreciated and noticed that we're getting new members in the Discord. People are showing up every day. I make it, a mo like, a point to try to go talk to them if I see somebody that's new in the Discord. So come hang out. You'll meet the people that host the podcast. We hang out. We're really accessible. And it's not weird. Like, every time I meet somebody new, they're like, Oh my God, like I, I, I felt so weird doing this. I was just lurking for like three days. And, like, no, man, just and like be like, hi, I want to play a game. And like, you can be the most awkward motherfucker ever. And we'll, we'll try to cut out we'll, some time for you. And like, yeah, it's we'll fine. play a game, man. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. So, and, like, we might be like, oh, that guy is fucking weird and annoying <laughs> later, but like, it's, it's going to be fine while you're playing. We might judge you after the fact, but not right then, not in the moment. But no, I mean, shit, like, there's a ton of people that, like, just showed up one day. That's how everybody in this Discord started. Fuck, Don just showed up one day, and I've got him on the podcast now. Me? So, yeah. Yeah, that's how Zill appeared. Like, shit, like, man, join the community. You'll get welcomed. It's not a weird thing. So, please, if you're on the fence about yes. hopping in the Discord... Get off the fence and stop Do being it. a wallflower. Come in, hang out, we'll chat, we'll play some games together. If you want to do that, that's where we are, right? So you should be able to find us, I think, on my Twitter. There's uh, 
permanent invite link that you should be able to find. Uh, other than that, I think you can search us in Discord. I'm not exactly sure how that works. But people seem to be able to find us. And the website has a link, I believe. Yeah, look for the website. I found a link on that. If yeah. you follow us, guys. So, I mean, if you guys want to join the community, <laughs> that's the way to do it. We are here. We do play with people. It's not weird. We're not going to think you're weird. Just come play. All right. So with that, Don, thank you for coming on. Uh, I appreciate you, man. Way to be clutch. Yeah, no problem. Zill, as always, lovely podcasting with you. Pleasure. And you, listener, have a great night. And that's not coming from me. That's coming from Castro. <laughs> <laughs>